When valuing a firm's common stock, we oftentimes use the dividend discount model. Now, one problem with this is many companies don't pay a dividend. A lot of tech startup companies tend to reinvest in the business rather than paying out a dividend. Uh, Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, has never paid a dividend um, as long as he's been running the company because he chooses to allocate the capital himself rather than giving it back to his shareholders. Also, another approach you can take is to use some sort of present value of earnings model. And again, this has a problem because many startup companies think uh, back to the late 90s and early 2000, a lot of these dot-com companies didn't have any positive earnings. So another approach for valuing the firm is to look at free cash flow. And free cash flow is defined as the cash flow available to all suppliers of capital. From a formula point of view, free cash flow to the firm equals operating cash flow minus net fixed asset investment minus net current asset investment. And there are other ways for uh, working through an income statement to get free cash flow, but this is one of them. So in order to value a firm, we can take the present value of all of the free cash flow for all of the periods from time period one to infinity discounted by one plus the weighted average cost of capital. And if we wanted the equity value, we could find the firm value and subtract out the value market value of the debt and also subtract out the market value of the preferred stock. If it turns out that free cash flow grows at a constant rate, then we get a formula that's similar to the Gordon model for valuing common stock. That is, it's free cash flow one period into the future divided by the interest rate minus the growth rate, the interest rate here being the weighted average cost of capital and the growth rate being the growth rate of free cash flow. And keep in mind that the free cash flow one period in the future is the current free cash flow times one plus the growth rate of free cash flow. And of course, if we wanted the equity value, we could use the same value of the firm minus the market value of the debt minus the market value of the preferred stock. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have some data here from 2013 through 2017, and we have these free cash flows for these five years, and we're going to assume that beyond 2017, free cash flow is going to grow at a constant rate of 3%. We're also going to assume that the weighted average cost of capital is 9%. The market value of debt is 3,100,000. The market value of preferred is 800,000. And the number of shares outstanding is 300,000. So what's step one? Step one is let's calculate the present value of the free cash flow occurring from the end of 2018 to infinity but that's going to be measured at the end of 2017. So we need to find the free cash flow in 2018, and that's going to be the free cash flow in 2017 times one plus the growth rate of free cash flow divided by the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate of free capital. So if we work that out, we get 10 million $300,000. Let's take that $10,300,000 and add it to the free cash flow in 2017 of $600,000. So the total free cash flow in 2017 is $10,900,000. Now what we have to do to find the value of the company or the value of the firm as the present value of all of these uh, free cash flows. And here we have the first year's free cash flow discounted by one plus the cost of capital, the second year's free cash flow discounted by 
one plus the cost of capital squared, etc. And if we do that, we get eight million six hundred and twenty eight thousand two hundred and thirty four dollars. So that's the value of the firm. If we want to calculate the value of the common stock, the value of the stock is going to be the value of the company minus the value of the debt minus the value of the preferred stock. So it's our calculation from the previous step, 8628234 minus the $3,100,000 market value of the debt minus the 800000 market value of the preferred stock. So we get $4,728,234 as the market value of the common stock. If we want the price per share, all we have to do is take this market value of the stock and just divide it by the number of shares outstanding, 300,000, and we get $15.76.